Explore the harsh and unfiltered truths of war, combat, and military life in this eye-opening video. From the brutal realities faced on the battlefield to the challenges of life in the armed forces, this compilation of 25 raw insights will leave you with a deeper understanding of the sacrifices and hardships endured by those in the military. Brace yourself for a no-holds-barred look at the harsh world of war and combat. People die. I know I sound like an idiot saying this, but sometimes people really forget this about war. They expect it to be a Disney movie, where there's no blood and no one dies in terrible ways, where everyone can go home and sleep peacefully in their beds. But the first reality of war is, yes, people will die. Not quietly and cleanly in their beds, but loudly and terribly, often suffering on the battlefield. Some will be innocent, and others will be legitimate military targets. Although we want to think otherwise, that's the reality of war. Death in war is intentional. You're sent to kill others, and they're sent to kill you. You're a statistic. Commanders know they must send people to their deaths, and while they won't waste resources lightly, they will choose to do so if enough ground or military objectives can be gained. And this applies to absolutely all armies. Going to war means facing death every day around you, staring at you without blinking. Military training usually lasts from several weeks to several months, and in some cases, even years, before you can be deployed to war zones. Many, even with the desire to do so, will never be sent. However, there's also the issue that some groups and armies send inexperienced soldiers into combat with basically no sufficient and necessary training. You become a small defenseless animal that's going to be hunted. Also, training isn't just about shooting and doing cool stuff we see in military movies. It involves things like learning combat rules, terminology, and even things you'd consider boring, like making your bed, doing paperwork, cleaning tasks, or wearing the uniform properly. Many times, you shoot without seeing what you're shooting at. This doesn't just apply to insurgent groups, terrorists, rebels, guerrillas, drug traffickers, or poorly trained soldiers. It also applies to professional soldiers. In many modern battles, most people shooting bullets usually don't see exactly what they're shooting at. If you're observant and have seen combat videos, you probably understand me better on this. This phenomenon, which can be difficult to understand for those outside the military and security fields, is common due to the fast and dynamic nature of modern engagements. Battles often take place in densely populated urban environments or complex terrains like jungles and mountains, where buildings, vegetation, and weather conditions can block the view. Another important aspect to mention is that many armed engagements often take place hundreds and hundreds of meters away. For example, it was recorded that during the Afghanistan war, combats between Taliban and U.S. infantry soldiers usually took place in a range of 100 to 300 meters. And this same applies in many modern combats, like in the Ukraine war. Healing in combat isn't just hiding for four seconds and injecting something. It's obvious, right? But after taking a shot to the face in a video game, you just have to hide behind a rock until your screen stops being red, and supposedly you're fine. Well, in real life, being injured in combat is one of the worst situations you can face. Real medical attention is much more complicated and can be long and painful. Much of what you do in a war zone is wait. Despite the enormous risks, much of war is uneventful and boring, and many soldiers may see little or no action. This is very true, and you can ask people who have been deployed to conflict zones. A lot of time is spent preparing and training, which is at least better than the tedium of moving, waiting for orders, or waiting for the enemy to act. This creates a paradox where inaction means you're still alive, but in that boredom, soldiers can long for action just to relieve the tension of not knowing what or when things will start happening. A movie that represents this situation very well is Jarhead. If you didn't understand me, watch the movie, and it'll be clearer. Confusion and Friendly Fire when an armed combat or even a brief and limited action begins, despite all the action and training, confusion can quickly appear everywhere. If you stick your head out, they'll see you or shoot at you. Where's the enemy? How many are there? Are they behind you? Where are the reinforcements? I can't see because of all the damn smoke. What was that noise? 
Did I get hit or not? What do I do now? Am I going to die? In the series The Punisher, Frank Castle exemplifies part of this confusion in this way. Do you know why a man misses a shot at 9 meters or less? Cortisol is released in the body when there's what we like to call adrenaline. It tenses the muscles. Everything speeds up. But combining all those effects makes you shake a bit and miss. Now, friendly fire in high-risk combat theaters is more common than you might imagine, for this reason, and often comes precisely from this confusion that arises in a hostile combat environment. Hence the importance of military training in realistic scenarios. The Prolonged Psychological Impact The psychological cost of war is something that almost never gets touched on and isn't exclusive to countries like the United States as portrayed in movies. Even in Colombia and Mexico, with very serious security problems within their borders, soldiers and police combating crime can suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD. Basically, the war doesn't end when the soldier returns home. Artillery tears you apart and remains the king of the battle. People often think artillery is a weapon of the past. Some even think it's useless or outdated. Nothing could be further from the truth. Today we know that artillery not only remains incredibly effective in conventional and symmetrical warfare, but it's truly terrifying. This type of weapon has the capability to literally tear a human apart, and it doesn't even have to be a direct hit. The mere shockwave from artillery or a mortar is capable of tearing a human apart from the inside, basically taking them out in a brutal way. The war between Russia and Ukraine has made clear the matter of artillery. I'll leave a video discussing this topic in detail in the description. Families suffer. It seems obvious, but war movies that only immerse us in the protagonist soldier's life sometimes completely ignore that every human has a family, friends, and acquaintances. And not just the American protagonists in a Hollywood movie. In all wars, on whichever side, whether you support them or not, soldiers have families who worry, suffer, and feel. Think about it. Your father, mother, children, or partner are called to war, they're sent to combat, and you never hear from them again. Many soldiers die, and even their bodies aren't returned to their families. In fact, there are tens of thousands of people who have been left in this situation in conflicts and wars throughout history. Every soldier is a human. Money drives war. It seems unnecessary to say, but it's still necessary to remember. Yes, money drives everything, and war is no exception. There's a lot of money in war. For example, in just the US military budget in 2022, more than $850 billion were allocated, and in 2023, this increased by more than $45 billion. And these aren't crazy figures since China also allocates large amounts of money. More than 70% of what Japan spends in a whole year, including things like health, education, transportation, infrastructure, etc. The country allocates more than 70% of that spending just to the military budget. Yes, it's a country prepared for combat, even if it doesn't seem like it. War generates a lot of money for contractors, arms manufacturers, logistics companies, and military consultancies. It's important to understand that many decisions in war are made based on money and the economy, not just strategy and morality. Guns aren't always fired. In war, many times bullets and missiles aren't the only recourse. Chemical, biological, and radiological weapons are also employed, as well as psychological, cyber, and even economic warfare tactics. The damage and casualties from these methods can be devastating and persist for generations. For example, Agent Orange used in the Vietnam War continues to affect the civilian and military population decades later. Additionally, the use of drones for intelligence, surveillance, and attacks has significantly changed the dynamics of combat. However, just because you don't have a firearm in hand doesn't mean you're not at war. Weather and terrain are enemies. We tend to think combat is only between two sides, but we forget the effects of terrain and weather. Environmental conditions can be as dangerous as the enemy. Extreme cold, scorching heat, dense jungle, dry desert, or rocky mountain can significantly complicate military operations. 
Diseases are devastating. Sanitary conditions in war are often deplorable, leading to the spread of diseases among troops and civilians. Infections, epidemics, and pandemics can decimate armies and cause enormous suffering to the population. A classic example is the Spanish flu during World War I, which caused more deaths than the conflict itself. The economic cost is immense. Wars are extremely expensive. The cost includes not only the immediate expense of military operations but also long-term spending on veterans, reconstruction, and interest payments on debts incurred to finance the war. For example, the costs of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars for the United States have exceeded $2 trillion, an economic burden that future generations will continue to bear. Ideologies and beliefs don't justify war. Often, war is justified in the name of religion, political ideology, or social justice. However, the real motivations are usually much more complex and less noble. Wars are fought for power, resources, and influence. Ideologies can be a facade to hide the true interests behind a conflict. War is a business and a tool of power, not a moral crusade. Brutality and Dehumanization War can lead to the brutalization and dehumanization of soldiers. To survive in such a hostile environment, combatants often must harden and desensitize themselves to violence and suffering. This can lead to atrocities and human rights violations. History is full of examples of soldiers who, under the pressure of combat, have committed inhumane acts. War brings out the worst in humanity. The loss of innocence. War robs the innocence of those who experience it. Young soldiers, often in their early adult years, are exposed to indescribable brutality and suffering. This can have a lasting impact on their psyche and worldview. War changes people in profound and often tragic ways. War never ends. Even after fighting ceases, the effects of war persist. Destroyed communities, displaced people, psychological trauma, landmines, and unexploded ordnance continue to affect the population long after a peace treaty is signed. War leaves scars that take generations to heal, if they ever do. Disinformation and Propaganda Modern warfare often comes with an information war. Propaganda and disinformation are used to manipulate public perception and morale both among the troops and the civilian population. Truth is often one of the first casualties of war, and narratives are constructed to serve the interests of those in power. Information operations can be as effective as bullets and bombs. The absence of justice. Often, war crimes and atrocities go unpunished. Impunity is common, and those who commit inhumane acts often face no consequences. Justice in wartime is rare and difficult to achieve. International courts and tribunals have limited reach, and often politics and diplomacy prevent justice from being served. Economic and social aftermath. War leaves economies devastated and societies fragmented. Reconstruction is a long and costly process, and often societies do not fully recover. Inequalities and social tensions are exacerbated, and economic repercussions can last for decades. Communities affected by war often face a long road to recovery and reconciliation. War has no winners. In the end, there are no true winners in war. Even those who can claim a military victory suffer enormous losses in terms of human lives, resources, and stability. War is a human tragedy where everyone loses, and the scars left on societies and individuals last long after the fighting has ended. War is humanity's defeat, a collective failure of diplomacy and reason. In summary, war is a relentless reality that affects all levels of society. From immediate death and destruction to long-term aftermath, Wars are devastating events that leave a deep mark on individuals and nations. It's crucial to remember and understand these harsh truths about war so that we can work towards a future where conflicts are resolved peacefully and diplomatically. We invite you to share your opinion.
Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description.